Hi everyone, Peter Edgerton here again. Um, I just wanted to take you through one of the most recent features of Configuration Manager Current Branch or SCCM, which is Create and Run Scripts. Now, this is a, a really cool little feature that's I think going to get developed further. Uh, it basically allows you to run a PowerShell script, and it's just limited to PowerShell at the moment. Uh, it allows you to run that script real time against um, one or, or multiple of your SCCM clients. Um, straight away, just real time. So you can get them to perform certain activities, you can gather information from those and you can capture that all in one place. Or The sort of possibilities that you can do with this are pretty much endless. Um, so I just wanted to take you through how to set that up and um, I'll give you an example of how you use it. Okay, so in order to use this you need at least Config Manager Current Branch 1706, that was when it was first put in. Um, this particular lab is on 17.02 uh, and you'll find it in the tech previews as well. So what we need to do, this is a pre-release feature at the moment, so if you're not familiar with pre-release features then um, you are okay to use them, Microsoft will support you and they're, you know, they're happy with you to use them. Uh, it just means that maybe they are not either fully tested or they're not fully functional, something like that. So. Um, yeah, it's a pre-release feature at the moment and in order to enable pre-release features if you don't already know you need to go into your administration pane uh, workspace even uh, go into the sites uh, and to the relevant site that you're working in again this is just a lab for me so if I hit hierarchy settings and then I need to make sure that I have this one ticked consent to use pre-release features now, this is already ticked for me because I've used this before. If you've not, then obviously there's not going to be a tick in there and it will now stay grey. Um, one other thing to note in here, specific to uh, running these scripts, is you need to tick this out if you want to approve your own scripts. The default is that if you create a script in here, you cannot approve it yourself because there's an approval mechanism, um, which for the right reasons really, to stop anyone doing anything, uh, anything they wouldn't like to. Um, because again, it's quite a powerful thing, quite a, tool, quite a powerful tool that you can be quite destructive with. So the default is that you create a script and someone else has to approve it before it can be used. So this is just my lab, as I said, so I'm going to take the tick out so that I can self-approve my scripts. If I OK that, that should become available to me now. Um, one other thing whilst I'm in this workspace is you need to be able to use this, you need to um, have the relevant class in your security in your role. So if I go into full admin and just show you what I'm talking about. In the permissions tab on here, there is a class called uh, SMS scripts. There we are. So depending on what kind of security rules you're using, whether it's default or um, custom roles then you need to make sure that the users or the admins even are going to have the appropriate uh, roles to use it. So it's just something to be aware of anyway. By default, because I'm a full admin I get this. So I cancel out of there. Uh, once you've enabled the pre-release feature you'll need to restart your uh, SCCM console and that should appear in your software library just like so. Now what I've done is I've already created a script and now it's just a uh, fairly straightforward script um, based on something by um, Jürgen Nielsen. Can't lay claim to this one. It's basically gathering log files from a client. So it's a really neat um, example of some of the cool stuff that you can do with this. So it's basically going to gather the log files from the SCCM client folder, zip them up, and then copy it to a file share that I've created on this server. So I've got two examples for you here. I've created one that's got a fixed location. I'll just show you that. So the fixed location is here. Uh, and I already approved this one. It's just, a, just for demonstration purposes. What we also have is uh, the option to use parameters. So if you have parameters in your script, you can now, uh, and I don't believe this was available immediately from 1706, I think this is a 1710 thing. Um, you can supply PowerShell parameters so that you, know, you can be a, bit, a little bit more dynamic with your scripts. So 
if I just show you to create a script we can right click on script or we can go up to the ribbon and we need to give it a name so I'm just going to use exactly the same thing with parameter now if I just get the script you've got an option here to either paste or type in your script here or you can hit import and then go find your PS1 file that you may have created earlier this section here is the parameter section and it's basically pulling in a parameter for the log share variable uh, and as I say that's just allowing me in this example to specify the path that I want to store the log files in eventually so I hit next on here and you can see it's picked that up as a parameter and it allows you if I hit edit to um, change a few things so I can make it required hidden change the data type maximum length minimum length regular regular expression and so on I'm just going to leave that as it is for now hit next and fly through the wizard okay so that's created it successfully you can see straight away that it's waiting for approval now as I said before in an ideal world and especially in production you're going to get someone else to approve this for you it's really for your own safety um, so yeah get someone else to check through the script test it test it and test it again use the tech previews set a lab up if you've not got one and so on um, because this can be quite destructive if you've got the wrong things so in my lab here I'm just going to right click and I'm going to approve it now what it does it presents me with a script again just to read through I can select certain details in there again just um, to review the, the information that's been put in hit next and then I choose to approve or deny and then I can put some kind of comment in there something like that and there we go if I fly through the wizard okay so now I've got two scripts in place one that's going to pull back config manager log files into one central location and one that's going to do the same but it's going to ask me for a parameter as to where I want to store those so if we jump in now to the assets and compliance workspace we can uh, see how we use this so this is my lab I've only got a couple of machines in here um, what you'll notice is if you hit devices and just browse for your device in there or do a search you're not going to get the option available and this is one of the sort of um, one of the things that you see in the, in the SCCM console you can't you, know, you can't hit something to all devices in that area you need to be viewing this in a device collection so drill down this way and open your relevant collection and then you can search through there and it's exactly the same when you're doing um, client actions okay, if we right click here we we'll should see now we get the option to run script um, the client notification and run scripts they both use something called the notification channel which has been around a few years now in, in SCCM now obviously in client notification you've got these kind of options where you can force a computer to download policy check for updates that kind of stuff um, run scripts again is using the same notification channel um, that was the one that was originally brought in a few years ago for um, endpoint protection to force policy immediately on that anyway so if I hit run script I've got a couple of examples here if I run this one initially gather SCCM log files and all I've done is created a file share on this machine that I'm using so hopefully what will happen is that it will um, gather all the log files, zip them up, store them in a temp file on the machine, copy them back uh, to the, the path that I've specified and then just delete it from the temp file. So hit next. So no parameters or anything in this one. So that should go away now um, pretty quickly and create the client job. And you can see whilst that's working that you've got a few methods of output here. So you can uh, view the output, you can view the exit code if you've used a custom exit code for example and maybe you're running a script that has multiple different exit codes which mean different things to you so you can view it by that and then you have a few different charts and things like that available.
pie chart, pie chart and data table. And there we go. So I'm viewing on exit code at the moment. So that particular one has an exit code zero, which most of the time is good. And you can see this as well. It gives you some kind of view. And just to give you an idea of the different views that you can get, you can switch those around and you can copy that information out as well. A few tabs at the bottom, run details, script details. If I close that now, jump into my um, my path. If I refresh this, so the machine I just ran that on is SCCM1. I've already tested these previously. So we can see the timestamp is similar to uh, the time I'm running this. If I open that up, there we go, there's all my log files. Okay, so that works uh, lovely. What I'm gonna do is I'm just show you another one. In fact, let's use this same one again because it's a little bit quicker. If I run script, I'll run it with a parameter this time. My lab is running a little bit slow. Hit next. And I can specify a value in here. There we go. We'll get there. Uh, just check. Did I call it log or logs? Logs. Okay. You can make this an admin share if you like, which, whatever you prefer. Okay, next on that. Now it's really going to go to the same location, but it should hopefully hopefully illustrate what we're trying to get to. Uh, and then, then exactly the same really, so it's going to create the client job just using the parameters that are specified. So maybe you're going to run this against one site and you want them to go to um, you know, a site in the UK. You're going to run this against another site and you want that to go to another server, let's say in, in the US, something like that. So that's an example of what you could use the parameters for. So whilst that's running, I'll just leave that there. Just one last thing to note, based on the information here, we've got some options in the monitoring workspace. We have script status, and you can see it gives you some history of all the scripts that were run. Um, and you can see this one is still in progress because there's no update time or execution state. It will show you the failed ones there, if any of them fail, and then succeeded. Um, this kind of thing, you can get some information about the output from the script, all this kind of stuff. So hopefully, if we go back, there we go, same again. And if I check this again, we've got two minutes later, so we can see that that's worked. Okay, cool. I'll refresh that. Just coming out and going back in. There we go. So we can see that one's shown us succeed as well. So that's about it, really. So I just wanted to get, take you a run through, show you what you can do, uh, how you can do it. Really, the possibilities are up to you. It offers a lot of flexibility, um, also a little bit of potential danger in there. So um, go in, check it out, see what you can create, um, send me the details. That'd be that'd be awesome. If you can share what sort of things you're doing, that'd be even better. Um, yeah, have a go.